All right. Well, thank you and welcome. If you're watching our services online, we want to welcome you. Uh, Brother Andrew will be speaking for us this afternoon. We're looking forward to that. We have those that are traveling, so I want you to remember all of those. Remember all those that are on your prayer list that you uh, normally would remember and include those that are traveling. First Psalm 538, my hope is built on nothing less. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4. Let's sing. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Next song, 539. One page over, 539. Sing verses 1 and 4, higher ground. Let's sing. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land, a higher plain than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost high and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven i found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plain than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. Before we have our scripture reading and our opening prayer, 552, 552, have thine own way. <clears throat> we'll sing all three verses, have thine own way. Let's sing. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will while I Search me and try me, man. 
pastor today, whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy presence, humbly I bow, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own Scripture reading will come from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. As His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank You for this state You gave us, and we thank You for many blessings. And we thank You for this other opportunity to worship You. We pray in everything that we do and say in this service according to Your will. We also that we clear our minds of worldly thoughts and we focus on you. We pray for the sick of this congregation that's been mentioned today, and if it be your will, they can get better and take their regular steps in life. We pray for those that's traveling of this congregation on this holiday weekend. We ask that you'll keep them safe and they can make their destination safely and also back home. We, we are also thankful that you sent your son on this earth to die on the cross for our sins that we have hope of heaven. We pray that we live our life on this on this earth at a home in heaven and be ours. And these things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Mark your books at page 662. 662. That will be your invitation song. Our song before Brother Andrew brings to lesson 230. 230. Worthy art thou. Let's stand. Mm -hmm. All right, let's sing. Worthy of praise is Christ our Redeemer. Worthy of glory, honor, and power. Worthy of all our soul's adoration. Worthy art thou. Worthy art thou, worthy of riches, blessings, and honor, worthy of wisdom, glory, and power, worthy of earth and heaven's thanksgiving, worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Lord, may we come before Thee with singing, fill with Thy Spirit, wisdom, and power. May we ascribe Thee glory and honor, worthy art Thou, worthy art Thou, worthy of riches, blessings and honor, worthy of wisdom, glory and power, worthy of earth and heaven's thanksgiving, worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Good evening, it's good to be with you online. Um, I had to reach into the bank account in my sermons, as I would say, because Larry had called me Wednesday and asked me if I would have preached the evening lesson so he could go to the beach. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 1, and we'll start in verse 3. That's 2 Peter chapter 1, and we'll start in verse 3. And we'll go through verse 7. Verse 7. 
It reads, As His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these ye may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Now there is not a single word or a short phrase that can describe God in His fullness. We get phrases like God is love, God is lot, God is just, but you can't describe God in only one small phrase. God encompasses so much more than a single concept in the human mind. But one of the phrases that I don't jump to but holds a deep truth is, God is good. In our reading, Peter says that we have everything we need for life and godliness according to the knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. It is that last word, goodness, that Peter just used to describe God that he tells us we need to add to our faith, our goodness, and our virtue. Have you thought about God as the essence of what is excellent, good, or virtuous? This evening, I want to encourage us to see the good. Peter calls upon us to add our faith and goodness. Paul calls upon us to think upon which is good, admirable, and excellent. They're all the same word in the original language. But how do I bring goodness into my character and my being? I'm glad you asked. There is no better place to start than with the essence of God. God is good. God's goodness is why He called us to leave a life of sin and live in the grace of Jesus. The goodness of God wanted what's best for you and me. Before we wanted a relationship with Him. Why does a parent love deeply a newborn baby? It's not because of what that baby can do for the parent. They just love that infant because they want that baby to grow up and be the best that it can be. As a good parent, we nurture our children. As a good parent, we seek to give them opportunity in the spiritual walk, their education, and the development of their character. It's your goodness, and Jesus spoke about this type of love. And let's go to Luke chapter 11, 11 through 13. It's Luke chapter 11, and we'll start in verse 11. Again, Jesus spoke about this type of love. He said, What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Jesus knows that a good parent will not do anything intentionally to harm their child. But God has given... But God is even greater than a parent. God never makes a mistake in the parenting. God wants to give you good gifts because He is a good Father. It's His character to be good. Peter and Paul want goodness to be a part of who you are, just like it's part of who God is. For Paul, that starts by thinking on that which is good or excellent. It gets the focus off of you and thinks about what the good thing is to do. The last word that Paul uses in his list is connected to the idea of thinking on that which is good or excellent, depending on your translation. He finishes the list by saying, If there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. We sometimes sing the song, Worthy Art Thou. It begins with, Worthy of praise is Christ our Redeemer, worthy of glory, honor, and power, worthy of all souls' adoration, worthy art thou, worthy art thou. For Paul, there is nothing more worthy of praise than the Godhead. Paul, when he writes his letters, sometimes finds himself simply writing about how great God is. And in Paul's prayer for the church at Ephesus, he would write in Ephesians chapter 3, starting in verse 20, he would write, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. When Paul says to Timothy that Jesus came to save sinners, of whom he was the greatest, he finishes that thought by saying in 1 Timothy chapter 1, Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. When Paul concludes his letter to churches in Rome, he closes by writing in Romans chapter 16 
Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest, and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, for obedience to the faith to God alone was the glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Now here's my point. Paul didn't focus on his own sin or the failures of others. Paul thought about the goodness of God in sending Jesus to save us from eternal punishment. Paul thought about what was good. Instead of beating himself up, he praises God for recreating him into a new creation. Do I fail? Yes. Do I sin? Yes. But does that define me? No. And why? Jesus came because of my sin to help me walk worthy of my calling. By a good God. As we close out this series of things we need to think on, we find that thinking is not our only calling. We are called to put these things into action. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 9, What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. What you do starts with what you think. When we fill our minds with the things of this world, our passion will be for the things of this world. When we fill our minds with the things of God, our passion will become like the things of God. How do you see yourself? What defines your character? We are often conditioned to think about ourselves negatively, to see our faults more than our virtues. But that's not what this teaching from Paul is about. He calls upon to to put the positive attributes to life into our thinking. There was a time when I really disliked me. The more I connected my life to God, the more I found that grace was a gift that had been given that I didn't accept. I started to believe in the grace of Jesus and the grace called me to change. I saw my life becoming more in line with the will of God because I was excited that He really loved me and forgave me. I wanted Him to be proud of me and what I found is I was proud of myself. Paul says to put into action all these wonderful things that we have been thinking about and that Paul had been teaching about. Because when we do, the God of peace will be with you. That's what I really wanted. That's what I want for you. I wanted to be at peace, and sin was keeping me from what I desire most. And if anyone come up here, this evening we all want you to be at peace. To know God is good. And if I'm ne- I've never been very good with invitations, but if we can help in any way, please text or call Larry or any of the men. We'll be gladly to help as we stand and as we sing. All to Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily to uh, fill in, if you will, when uh, someone is is absent or something, and he's not always just uh, willing to do that, he's anxious to do that, and we appreciate his attitude and his efforts, 
His lessons are very well thought out, very well prepared, and we're, we're thankful for that. If you're listening online, we're, we're certainly glad that you are, are joining us and, and look for the opportunity to, uh, to serve your, your, your brotherhood, if you will. And uh, we hope to look forward to a time that we can have a normal worship schedule, as we said this morning in our, our morning worship service. We'll close with the song 778, Be With Me, Lord. If there's anything else, uh, all right, 778. We'll sing one verse there, and after that we'll be dismissed in prayer. Thank you. And let's sing. Be with me, Lord, I cannot live without thee. I dare not try to take one step alone. I cannot bear the loads of life unaided. I need thy strength to lead myself upon. Let's go to God's prayer, please. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you so very, very much for this truly wonderful day, because it is your day, and we acknowledge that. Father, we love you as, as, as much as we possibly can. We, we like to say we love you as much as life itself, because from you comes all life. Thank you. Father, as we leave this place today, may we not leave you, but take you with us, and take us, pick you and your son's name out into the world, so that they can know the promise and the joy that we have through you. Again, we thank you in your son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah.